Fala galera, aqui é o Cris, o Cris Eba, dessa vez realizando um sonho pessoal meu, consegui entrevistar o Jake Baldino do Gameranks, que na minha opinião é o melhor canal de videogames no YouTube que existe. Se você não conhecia, o link está aqui embaixo. Se você não assistia, conheci, não assistia porque o seu inglês não era bom, a novidade é que eles estão lançando essa semana um canal, a versão espanhol do canal deles, então eles estão traduzindo boa parte do conteúdo deles para o espanhol, fica muito mais fácil de acompanhar. Aproveite, confira, está aqui embaixo também, assim como o link de alguns vídeos específicos aí do, do Game Ranks e do Because Video Games, que rolaram umas, umas piadinhas internas assim, na entrevista. Que, que ainda teve, pra mim teve um toque mais especial ainda porque eu consegui marcá-la justo no dia do meu aniversário, assim, então foi um, foi um puta presentão pra mim, é, foi maravilhoso, espero que vocês se divirtam, pelo menos metade do quanto eu me diverti já vou ficar feliz, porque pra mim foi demais, galera. Então aproveitem, é, como sempre, curta, inscreva, todas aquelas porcarias que vocês sabem que vocês têm que fazer. Joia, gente, um abraço, divirtam-se, até a próxima, falou. Are you ready? I was born ready. <laughs> Okay. Hi everyone, uh, it's me, Chris, uh, from Los Nerds. I'm here with a very special interview today. I'm here with uh, Jake Baldino from Because Video Games and Gameranks. Hey you? man, thanks for having me, dude. What's going on? Uh, I'm glad to be here. It's great. W welcome to our channel. Just so people that maybe don't know you and don't know Gameranks, uh, you were host and producer of Gameranks and Because Video Games, right? Mm -hmm. uh, If, if anybody doesn't know the channels, uh, I'll be linking it below. Go there, watch it, like and subscribe, as you guys say. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and it, if you're watching this and you don't know Game Ranks, you should really watch it, and especially the Q&As from Because Video Games, because I'm not going to ask anything that you already answered that. Thank you. But <laughs> some of the stuff... Even though I would, I would answer it again. I, I can talk forever. Yeah, so. don't worry. So people, if they're curious, they can go to your channel and watch your video. And, but some of the stuff you answered there made me very curious, so I'm including stuff related to there. So it's, it's a lot of internal jokes here, stuff about game ranks that people should watch your channel to understand better. Uh, as you said, this is your first interview to a Brazilian channel. This is so yeah. cool. And what we wanted to do, how we start our interviews is asking, I mean, how you started in this, this geek world? What was your first poison? I mean, comics, movies, video games, how, how did it all start for you? For me, it first started with a Nintendo. I was lucky enough to start on, you know, you know, from day one, the first console. My mother brought home a Nintendo and I was hooked on it. I also uh, had a family friend who would, who loved comic books. And every every week he would go to the comic book store and he would bring me back one extra comic. And this was like before I knew how to read. I was really young, but I still like obsessed over the pictures and I developed a huge stack of comic books. So I, I was lucky. I think I, I I never forget like how fortunate I was to be exposed to really ridiculous, cool things, especially gaming, because gaming for me, I, I was a 90s kid. But I was still lucky enough to be raised on the original Nintendo. Then I worked my way up eventually to a PlayStation and a Nintendo 64. And that's when I kind of caught up with the, the actual current state of gaming. Cool. My, my first console was actually, I, I have a shirt here that shows it. Oh, nice. <laughs> the Atari. Like, I actually started with the Intellivision, which is a little older than the Atari. Yeah, that's... Now you're really throwing it back. What are you, 100 years old? Oh, no. I, yeah, I'm, prob <laughs> I'm probably younger than Falcon. I'm actually, okay. I'm actually turning 38 today. So today oh, is congratulations. You look, you look incredible. Thanks. <laughs> Do, would you like to go out sometime? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that caught me completely off guard. <laughs> Your face was great. <laughs> well, I, I thought you had a girlfriend and I'm married, so but we can hang out. There's no problem with that. Oh yeah, no, sure. Yeah, no, I'm getting married too in, in October, so wow. that'll be interesting. Congratulations, cool. Thank you. I'm pretty excited. It's weird. <laughs> it's it's a lot of work. Yeah, it seems to be, but it all seems like it's for good things, like to have your partner with you forever, you know? Like I couldn't do the things I do without having that person supporting me. So This I'm looking forward to it. This is amazing. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you, man. So uh, you said you had read a lot of comics. Uh, which mm -hmm. ones were your favorites? 
Uh, back in the day, it was the that 90s X-Men run, as well as Ultimate Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Just kind of the basics. I was really not... The person who was bringing me home comics didn't really bring a lot of DC stuff home. Okay. Uh, DC, I caught on board with the animated series of Batman. And that's where I really... It, it was good because I was reading, especially with the shows and everything, I was reading the comic run of X-Men that was more or less being put on television at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it was all like just one big, like just nerd ocean washing over me. Uh, I I loved, I remember picking up ultimate Spider-Man and that was like when I was really starting to actually grasp how to read and stuff. I think that's when I was pretty well read. Uh, And that's what really hooked me. And then once I got a little older, I started dipping my toes into graphic novels and the Watchmen you know, everybody has their moment with the Watchmen, and that was one of my first big like graphic novels. That and V for Vendetta, and I was hooked. I still am. I don't have as much time to read uh, as as I as I wish until I keep up with things. But uh, now, what I try and do is, if I see a run I really like uh, or a series, I wait for it to be collected in like a volume mm-hmm. or a book in a hardcover, and then I pick it up and read it all because I don't have time to like keep up and go to the comic book store because I'm weird. I don't want to do digital. I love digital everything, but mm-hmm. not comic books. I can't. Well, I don't know. You why. don't have the feeling from from grabbing it and then turning the pages. I think you, you can't get that on an iPad or a Kindle or something like that, right? Yeah, the actual physical, tangible collecting something. I need that. I like that. You know, that's like the whole. That's half the fun. Yeah, and, and I understand that today is very hard to keep up with everything. I think it's a great time to be a nerd, mm-hmm. but it's oh, so it hard to keep up. You have to pick your battles, right? Yeah, think about it though, like where we are right now, like it's our time. Like it's almost like our time to rule, you know, yeah. in the sense that like we're on top. Like we used to be weird and like a lot of the stuff we were into, no one gave a shit about. Exactly. No one cared about. Now the biggest movies in America right now are is Guardians of the Galaxy. Like I never in a million years would have thought we would see something like that. It's crazy. Yeah. I watch your video on Guardians too, and I totally agree with you. It's an amazing movie. Yeah, I really, I was going into it kind of like, uh, I don't I don't know. But I was surprised. It was really, really, really good. And it like totally held up with the first. Yeah. I mean, and, and Baby Groot, my son, my son will be turning one year next week. And oh, oh I perfect. wanted so bad to cosplay him like Baby Groot. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. That would be so great. Did you see the, uh, the, the, like the new Lego Marvel superheroes game? Uh, yeah. Because they have a little Lego baby Groot, and he looks like he looks weird. Cool. It's funny. He looks like a little turd. It's <laughs> it's funny. Haven't seen that yet. So uh, you said about uh, the time you have, which is limited, I understand, because I mean you do yeah. a lot of stuff. Uh, you play a lot of video games. Uh, do do you also watch gaming online, like streaming on on Be- uh, Beam now? Now it's Mixer and Twitch and YouTube, or or do you mostly prefer to to be playing instead of watching? I do tend to play. Uh, when I do watch, I usually watch more informational or more scripted stuff. Like, I mean, I like PewDiePie. I, when he, he doesn't play games as much as he used to, but uh, I, I like it because it's like orchestrated, edited, funny content. Mm-hmm. I, I usually, chances are I know what the game is, so I'm not going to him to find out what the game is. Mm-hmm. I just want to laugh at the game. Um, I, I, I prefer stuff like that. Every once in a while, a good Twitch streamer, like right now I'm into watching... Uh, p- people play Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Yeah, on, I don't know. What, it just makes for like a really good Twitch stream. It makes it like really exciting. So I do pop in and watch some of those. Uh, and then that's about it, really. Other than that, uh, esports. I'm not big into esports, but fighting games. Mm-hmm. I love watching people who are crazy good at fighting games because it's like it's I can't even imagine what they can do. Right? <laughs> it's like a whole different. They're on a whole other like level, like a plane of thought. It's so. It's so crazy. Yeah, I know, I know. Before esports and all of that, I had some friends that were amazing at uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 from the Dreamcast. Yeah, and, and I was so to, fast. Yeah, and I would go to their house and I would just watch it. And and they what they did was so fun. They had like uh, they had the teams and they did like uh, themes. Like I had a friend that did only like uh, Hulk, Juggernaut, and only the big fighters, or uh, or Ken, Akuma, and Ryu. 
And yeah. so, so they, they set like teams to play against each other, like special teams. And, and it's, it's uh, I'm, I'm working on uh, Tekken 7 right now. And we're all laughing here because it's so weird that Tekken 7 has Akuma in it. <laughs> and he even has an EX meter and everything from Street Fighter. And it makes no sense for him to be in Tekken, but they just do it anyway. They even put him in the story. Like he's a he's a real main character in the Tekken universe. Why not? Yeah. Who cares? I mean, like it's funny. Crossovers. If they do it in comics, why not in video games, right? Exactly. And he's like the best one too. Like he's he can kick everyone's ass in Tekken now. That's a yeah. spoiler. For, but <laughs> Akuma's awesome. Yeah, he is. So so in, in your day that you work, do, do you have like an average that you divide on how many hours you spend gaming, filming, producing? Because you do a lot. I mean, you know, your day probably has more than 24 hours from all the stuff I watch from Game Ranks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I have other people that I work with that are really good. You know, Tom, I have Andrew, the new guy, I have Falcon. Like, But I'm still conceiving and coming up with a lot of the content, writing some of it. And uh, games, game time is weird because when it's time for a before you buy type video, I need to play nonstop, which means I'm playing at the office during work hours and then I go home and I keep playing. Uh, I feel like it's important to have that like sense of place. Like you go home at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you leave work, but then I still keep working. <laughs> I can't stop. Uh, what I'm still try trying to kind of figure out in my life though is where does the time come for me to just play what I want to play? Like play a weird, dumb, relaxing game, a game I love, a game I want to replay. I'm finding those moments getting smaller and smaller. Like I've been dying to go back and play, uh, replay The Witcher 3. Mm -hmm. And I know I have no time to do it, but I, I, but I would want time so bad. Uh, that I think the, playing the games takes a large portion of my time. That And I still do a lot of the video editing. Video editing, you probably know, is kind of time consuming like no matter how good you can get at it, it still takes a while it's just a time intensive workflow that's why i try to do these interviews without editing so yeah it's a if beautiful you thing right just all right we can just get it but it'll be a very short cut quick cuts and then export upload yeah you're good that's all you need yeah exactly so you mentioned before you buy which is mm -hmm. i would say one of the most iconic parts of your show which for people that don't know is where you you give some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion thrown in there, right? <laughs> yep. Does it feel creepy to hear you being quoted like this? <laughs> no. Uh, only because when I used to do, I don't know if you've, but, but before I did Game Ranks, I did pretty much it. And that was like a fan, a movie, a movie and game fan style mm -hmm. podcast video with friends. Uh, we do it every week. We do it for an hour. And that had a following. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I'm unscripted or when I'm with other people, I have a tendency to say much more stupid things, like the dumbest things you've ever heard. So a lot of people picked up on that and made dumb catchphrases that I said. Like one time I said, uh, I forgot what month the number five represented. Uh, so people... So people like made a meme out of that, and yeah, I know, yeah, I had a hard time with that. Uh, so a couple of other already. things. I used to say my thing too. I would always say "sign me up" because I was so excited for everything, and I'd always say "sign me up." So then people would always tweet me and say "sign me up." So it, I, I'll never get used to it, but uh, I've, I've experienced it now for a while. Cool. As long as you don't say pizza on me, then I'll have to kill you. Oh, <laughs> crap. <laughs> Okay, we'll have to discuss on that. Uh, but uh, going back to before you buy, what always caught my attention because I've been watching Gamer Ranks for about a year and a half or so is that they're, they're always showing this this crazy guy with a suit and and like with, with this pose like this and and this yeah. And I yeah. asked myself where did it come from, and then I did some archaeology in Gamer Ranks yeah. videos, and I came across this very first video. Oh, the giveaway video, one? yeah. That's where we got it from. I'm, I'm impressed you found that. Do you remember this one? Yeah, I'm proud of that. That whole, uh, that whole, like, that setup and that backdrop for the early videos and the early Friday show, that was set up in my house. That was, like, a basement setup. Like, that Game Ranks background mm -hmm. was just a big piece of wood that I painted white mm -hmm. and just tried to light perfectly without getting any shadows, and that was it. That was how Game Ranks kind of started. It was in my basement. 
uh, with no pants on. I never had any pants on, and is I made videos. Is this video. really true? Because you once said that you, you started in your basement without pants. Is this true, or are you just, just joking? Yeah, no, I would say that a majority of the early Game Ranks videos, I have no pants on. Like, I can say that with confidence. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it should be now i have to wear pants it sucks but it sucks right you gotta yeah. sacrifice for the things you love <laughs> i understand you also mentioned the friday show where i mean you you, just, you give us the news and every show i mean there are people shouting at you or talking to you that's that's mostly tom right yeah that's mostly tom tom is usually operating the camera and stuff and then every once in a while andrew the new guy pops in okay and are, are any of, of his inserts scripted or he just interrupts you? Yeah, it's all 100% completely random, no scripted at all, because we've been working together for long enough that mm -hmm. we it kind of almost becomes a competition to like either embarrass each other or make each other laugh more. So it kind of just it works out. So what we do is like we film the Friday show. It's usually it's like a, a 10 minute show or so. We usually have a good 20, 25 minutes of footage uh, of me. That was my running next through, question. <laughs> yeah, I'm running through stories, but then I'm also bullshitting with Tom and Andrew. And then we cut in what kind of makes sense. Uh -huh. It turned out to be a kind of cool process. No, and, and you can really see it's, it's very natural. And I think this is what makes a lot of fun of it. Thanks. That's definitely what we were hoping to hear. <laughs> cool. Uh, another question is... What's your problem with the Panini Press? <laughs> <laughs> My problem with the Panini Press is that in a work environment, in an office professional environment, it's too messy. Okay. It's just it's just too much. But we have one now. I know. I got them one, yes, and uh, they used it twice. Wow, that That's much. It. I mean, hey, I know, it shows how much they really appreciate it, right? <laughs> cool, yeah. <laughs> Well, I once tweeted that because uh, I, I, I signed up for the weekly uh, giveaway, but since I'm in Brazil, you guys won't be able to send it my console. And I tweeted to GameRanks and Tom saying that if I ever won, I would donate my console for you guys to buy a Panini Press. That, that would be your generous, generous man. <laughs> that would be an expensive Panini Press. That would be pretty good. <laughs> be made of gold. Well, yeah, well, what can I do with a console I can pick up, right? Yeah, that's true. The other question now, and, and this is a tricky one. No one has ever seen Falcon on video, right? Yes. But you guys nope. seen him. Mm hmm How handsome is Falcon? Like, not uh, for a bird or for a person, because our viewers speculate because he has this beautiful voice that he's like a Harrison Ford in Indiana Jones, early Indiana Jones, like very charming guy mm -hmm. from his voice. I'd I'd say he's somewhat in between. Okay. Uh, he's definitely voice. He has a voice for radio. He has a face for radio. No, that's bad. That's bad. That's, a, that's an insult. I'm kidding. No, that's bad. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, he's, he, he's uh, gonna watch this, you know, right? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, he looks he looks like you, just kind of like a regular right. guy with like medium length hair, stubble. That's about it. I can't really, I don't want to give away too much of the mystery. No, no, but, you shouldn't. Uh, you should. That's the, the most part of the show is that no one knows how he looks like. But uh, He also always wears sunglasses inside, and we think it's really weird. Like Daredevil? Yeah, but he's not blind. <laughs> so it's just kind of like, why are you doing that? <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, maybe one day. And this was actually my question for your last Q&A, which didn't win. About Falcon. Sorry. <laughs> don't worry if he, you answered uh, before i won't have the chance to ask it to you right now so that's true <laughs> he, he's kind of like our, our our national treasure we like to keep him locked up and safe and we call upon him when we need him most cool he also has a channel uh, waste time yes do you produce that too or are you involved in that or it's mostly falcon i'm involved in the sense that i help come up with some of the content ideas I co-write some of the videos, and sometimes I have a little bit of a hand in just kind of managing it and making sure the thumbnail gets made and the video gets edited and then I publish. Uh, so, yeah, I'm kind of like an in-between for that, but I, I do have my hands in that. Okay. That's a lot of Falcon. Falcon Falcon isn't just a gamer. Like, he has a lot more going on. He cares a lot. He wants to talk more about more things. He's not a gamer first, even. Uh, but 
so so that this was kind of good for him because it was able to give him an opportunity to talk about you know more stuff science weird computing stuff information you know just just something to spread the wings a little bit no pun intended i guess pun intended yeah <laughs> Cool. And I imagine that his videos are the longest to edit because you guys have to find the images and do the inserts and all of that. Yep. So. Yeah, it uh, it's time intensive, but it's worth it, especially now for waste time, how we're doing it. We're kind of animating them. We're giving them like a slight animated feel to them. We have a cool animator that we work with, and uh, I think that's making a difference. So it's not just like game ranks. It has to feel a little different, but still have the same charm. Mm -hmm. And s people seem to be responding well to it. And we have plans to push it even bigger soon and make it more than what it is. But right now, it's you know we're just keeping it, seeing how people like it, and it seems like it's doing good. I, I like it a lot too. I mean, thanks. These are these are by far my my favorite channels. And again, I, I don't want to sound like a fanboy, but I, I like your channel so much that I even watch the the videos on iOS and Android uh, games. And I oh wow, own, dude, thank you. I, I own an I own I own a Windows phone, so I watch. Oh. Yeah. I had a Windows phone. Do you like it? I I like the phone. I don't yeah. like that the apps don't work well and that yeah. they're crappy. I mean. I agree. I had one that was HTC built. And I love the hardware. Mm -hmm. I loved some of the look of the software, but I didn't like how I used it, basically. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the problem is, for example, Facebook, I, I use it on the web browser of the phone because the app is crappy. And, yeah. I mean, and, and we're talking about Facebook, I mean, which everybody uses. I mean, yeah, you think it would be universally well-developed. But I, 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 I'm glad you watch those iOS and Android videos because I do too, uh, because I usually need like one addictive mobile game to kind of keep me going so i usually we like we take those picks pretty seriously uh none of them are sponsored or anything we just go and we look and we see what people are playing what people are into and we just throw it on the list and it seems to work what are you addicted right now right now i am playing what do i have here right now i have uh i've been into zen zen studios pinball okay. uh they just put out, put out a bethesda game themed pinball so it has pinball with uh doom and skyrim cool. themes so it's cool i love it it's really good it's free yeah. to play so there's some stuff with that but i like it i like pinball i'm a sucker for some good pinball cool have you played the classic machines right probably right yes oh yeah amazing yeah i i was lucky that i caught the tail end of arcades still being around mm -hmm. like arcades died out like early 90s but i was able to be around just long enough to get a taste of it and, you know, get some of those really good arcade games. And I'm, I'm hoping it makes a comeback. I don't know. Yeah, I, I love, love arcade. You can still find some places that are specialized in that that you can go, but it's, I mean, I know in Sao Paulo, where I live here in Brazil, there are like two or three places where you can find the old pinball machines or the old, old arcades. Like you can play, I don't know, Street Fighter 2, uh, Virtua Fighter, uh, what else? The, those that I used Sega, to love Virtua Fighter. Yeah, that Sega racing game. Uh, oh, Outrun? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, in New York, uh, in New York City, there's a new scene now with bars. Uh, a lot of the bars and clubs are being called barcades. So it's like you go, you have a drink, and you play arcade games. And I like it. It's pretty cool. I hope it gets bigger. Because, gets up, right? <laughs> yeah, more opportunity to play arcades is the better. Cool. Do you own an iPhone or an Android phone? Right now, I, I'm notorious. I switch back and forth like a crazy person. But right now, I'm on an Android. Okay. Right now, I have uh, an S7 Edge from Samsung. And it's okay. I'm not totally happy with it. But I'm waiting to see next what Google Pixel, like the next Google Pixel or the next iPhone. If one of them really wows me, I'm going to move towards one of them. Cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, in one of the first Q and A's of, of because video games, somebody asked you to pitch the perfect game. Yes. And yeah. I'm gonna quote you here. You said something open world where you can shoot people, drive vehicles, have superpowers, skateboards, in a ridiculous '80s cartoon action style with cool guns. Yeah. So did Sunset Overdrive live up to your expectation? It didn't. No. <laughs> It didn't. No, I was really, really excited for it. I actually got an Xbox One for that game. 
And it has uh, pretty much everything that you mentioned in your perfect. It does. <laughs> Something about it though, in terms of fun factor, didn't quite didn't really quite click with me. I think maybe it was the mobility. Like I didn't think the movement and stuff was fast enough. I wanted it to be more fluid, more fast, and for some reason that didn't jive with me. And eventually I just got kind of bored of the game. Um, it's it's a little bit repetitive. I agree. A lot of people are saying like, oh Jake, your ideal game that you described is Saints Row. Like Saints Row 4. Yeah, Saints Row 2. Or, or Get Out of Hell. That, the, the sense of override popped into my mind, but you're right. Saints Row is sort of like this. I'm looking forward to, and now more recently, I've been looking forward to Agents of Mayhem, Deep Silver's next game. Okay. For, uh, so, because it's very much Saints Row style, but with more s- superhero over-the-top characters. I still don't know a lot about it, uh, but I'm hoping maybe that's something that could be my thing. I'm going to play it at E3 in two weeks now. God. So I hope it lives up to what it could really be. I I mean, if they made a game, okay, like Skate, like EA's Skate, if they made a game like Skate where you have guns, game of the year. I don't know why. Or you're not into zombies. I'll take some zombies, yeah. I'll take like zombie a zombie mode that you can choose from, definitely. Because now every single game has a zombie mode or version or whatever. You know what was good though? Uh, Red Dead, Red Dead zombie mode was really good. Yeah. Like I was waiting, I was really hoping Grand Theft Auto Five Rockstar would do a zombie thing because I feel like they would do it right. And they never did. They didn't even do single player DLC. Still waiting for that. But you talked about that on your last show, I know. Yes. <laughs> and well, another game that you guys talk a lot is Destiny. Yes. And now we have Destiny 2 being launched, I think, this fall. Yes. Yeah. September, October. I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. How are you, your expectations for that game? Me, I am. I. Uh, this is hard because <laughs> it. I feel like it. It. I. In my mind, the reveal of Destiny 2, I was imagining a bigger overhaul, like a bigger refresh, start over. Uh, Destiny 2 looks very much more like more Destiny, mm-hmm. but with subtle but important fixes. Um, I. I wanted a little bit more just because maybe I wasn't a big fan of. Uh, the cohesion of the world and the story. Mm-hmm. So they are changing that. <clears throat> but I think I would have rather have seen a do-over than a let's move forward and try and fix it, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but gameplay-wise, I'm into what Destiny 2 seems to be doing in terms of making it easier for people to play and making it more accessible and trying to fix a lot of people's big complaints from the first Destiny. I think they're doing some huge stuff like under the hood that I think could make it a big deal. Now I'm just waiting to see how much, how big the worlds are, uh, the extracurricular or extracurricular activities like Sparrow Racing. Sparrow Racing League on the original Destiny was so cool. Yeah. And it was like a very like unique, weird thing that they put in temporarily. I would love to see Destiny 2 really embrace that fun stuff. That's, that's what I want, honestly. Okay. I've, thought of, I've spent a lot of time thinking about a game that I don't play that much. To be honest. Because you guys talked a lot about it. <laughs> we do, yeah. I mean, I loved it at first. I played it nonstop for like a month or two, and then I dropped off. And then I hopped back in for Taken King. And not only that, I was surrounded by people that love it and play it all the time. A lot of people, a lot of friends on Facebook, uh, Andrew and Tom in the office, they play Destiny like crazy. So I'm still like exposed to it, and I care about it. I just don't really play it. So I'm hoping, I'm still hoping Destiny 2 changes that. Okay, and when when you guys have to review games that are really like party oriented, like like Destiny, The Division, or mm-hmm. or Ghost Recon, that I mean the whole fun is playing with friends. Mm-hmm. Do, do you guys play with each other in the office, or or do you play with other people online, random people, or or how, how you guys do that? Yeah, I play I play a lot with randoms just to get the full experience. Um, lately, though, we have been playing more in the office. We've been playing Injustice. We've been playing some Tekken. Uh, we've been messing around with the Switch a lot. The Switch is easy to get quick multiplayer games in. Um, because that's one of my favorite things, that's one of my favorite compliments to a game, especially when it's a game that otherwise isn't that great, 
I think a lot of games can transform when it's good with friends. It can feel like a totally different experience, and that's like one of my favorite pros to put on a list of pros and cons for a game. It makes a hell of a difference. I, I, I agree with you. I mean, I, I'm a huge Gears of War fan, and I just love it to play with, with my friends, my cousins. Sometimes we, we get together, we, we put our consoles in the backpack, we join in somebody's house, we set up a local LAN, and then we just play horde modes like that's awesome. Our own TVs and, and that's I, I did that with uh, Gears of War three, and uh, we also played a lot of on Xbox three sixty. We played a ton of Rainbow Six Vegas. That was one of my favorite games to play with friends. Like it was just so so good. That was like my Counter Strike for a while. That and Halo, Halo two. That was big. Cool. And if you could like reboot or, or select any of these games that you want that are party oriented that you could play before it was launched or, or made especially for you, but every time you played it, you had to have Leroy Jenkins in your party. Would you do that? <laughs> I would deal with that. I would deal with that. Do I get a mute button or no? No, no mute button and you'd be screwing around all the time. But I would get any game rebooted exactly the way I wanted it. Yes. It's a motivator yeah, I would game. It. I would take, take it. it, yeah. I would. I would take that deal. Cool. I'll, I'll just go deaf. <laughs> He'd be screwing around your raids. You have to remember that. Yeah, that would be a problem. That would be a problem. Then I would avoid... I would I would love it for a game where I could sabotage him. Like it's I could like take care friendly, of him. Turn friendly fire on and yeah, then put him in your party. Okay. Take him out of the picture. Just like, well, all right, we know what you're going to do. Get to the back. <laughs> cool. Uh, one last question, which I actually skipped. Uh, as I said, this is the first interview I scripted, uh, but I wanted to ask you that. From the people in the gaming industry, I mean, there are probably a lot of people that you admire. Can you name some of them, and have you met some of them? Yeah, um, Adam Sessler being one of them. Um, somebody who I disagree with very often, but I like the way he speaks about games, and I really just like what he's done watching him on American television for the longest time growing up and then watching him on G4 and Rev3 games and then he kind of fell out of the industry. Uh, he he was really influential to me. I did get to meet him a few times. He's a very nice guy. He's given me some really good advice that is pretty valuable. Um, also, he's not in gaming, but uh, Philip DeFranco is somebody I really... I, I think he does an amazing job. I've always wanted to... I, I, I just like his approach to how he makes things, how he how he talks about things, everything. Uh, I did meet him very briefly. I literally just shook his hand. That was it. That was cool. Um, and in video games, I never have time to stop and think. Um, I, I look up to... This is going to sound weird, too, because everybody makes fun of him, but Jeff Keighley, um, I, I like what he does. Like I, I respect his power to produce things and make big shows like the game awards and the E3 presentations. Um, that takes a lot. And I know people think he's corny and like he kind of is, but the way he gets to put on these big shows and the way he does it, the way he arranges it, the way he can also still have intimate relationships with developers like Hideo Kojima mm -hmm. and get them to say interesting things, I think is huge. I think that's so cool. And I hope one day I can do big, huge things like that. That's, that's, that's what I'd like to maybe do. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. No, personal question. Have you ever met Rod Ferguson from Coalition? I have not, no. I have been in the same room as him, but I've never met him. Cool. Uh, yeah. I, do res I do respect what he has done for Gears because I love Gears 4. Yeah. I mean, he, he's one of the person I admire a lot. And I'm, yeah. I mean, this is, I actually, I, I don't think I'll be going to E3 soon. But last year, I started a campaign to try to bring him to Brazil. We have a, a, our own E3 here in Brazil. It's called Brazil Game Show. It's in October. Uh -huh. So I created a hashtag Rod in Brazil to, to try to convince him to come down to Brazil. That, you, you got it. That would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, it didn't work out because it was uh, last year, the, the Brazil Game Show was in, it was earlier. It was in September, and it was one month before the game launched. And it was in the same weekend as PAX West. Oh, man. So that's rough, yeah. yeah. Especially at a game launch. Those guys go crazy right before yeah. the game launch. 
and he's in Vancouver and Pax West is in Seattle, which is, I don't know what, one hour it's, drive or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's much easier to get to. Yeah. That's but cool. Still, I, mean, I, I still love what he's done though with the franchise. I think that's huge. Are you, cause you're a big gears fan. So like, what is, what are your, what's your perspective? Are you happy with the new direction, the, some, the somewhat new direction? Yeah, I, I think it's okay. I mean, I don't think the new characters are as charismatic as the older ones, but I I mean, it, it, it's a reboot. I mean, the, there's a lot of history. Uh, what I really liked about the Gears is, is how deep the story was, mm. the, the, the hardcore moments. I mean, uh, my favorite character so far is, is Ty Kaliso from mm. Gears 2, yes. the, the Maori guy with the tattoo. I mean, yeah when he shot himself because he was like all screwed up because of locust and then you have that scene with maria and all that so it's very emotionally heavy and i like games that that have this, this story that, that touches you so that's why i like gears because it didn't uh on the surface it didn't look like it would have moments like that it looked very much like a game just about tough men their yeah. muscles and they shoot and kill but there's a lot more to it there's a lot of like real slow emotional beats yeah, I I agree 100%. Dude. What's your favorite Gears of War game? Uh, I think I think it's tied with one and two. Two to me, I can acknowledge, I think is is the stronger game. But Gears of War one, I have a lot of memories with. Gears Gears of War one was uh, split screen multiplayer with my friends, just shotgunning each other like crazy playing that multiplayer you know it was one of the earlier multiplayer games a lot of people got hooked on that i knew um uh that plus the whole there's a lot of mystery around it going into it it was a hyped game but it was like just this new thing a new world it was dark the graphics were amazing it was so much that we hadn't seen before and it was really really unique for the time and i remember being blown away so i think i think the first one is my favorite just because of the memories i have with it i actually haven't played the remastered version of it because i'm scared i want to like preserve my original memory of the game i almost don't want to revisit it you, you can play it yeah just go ahead i mean it's seal of approval game. you approve yeah I, I do approve it okay good the game aged well and they did a, an amazing work with the remaster or rebooting or whatever, whatever the ultimate is. edition yeah. yes okay i will i will take your advice 100 percent. sure go my 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 is actually gears 2 uh, yes, yeah. I like the story, and it was the first game where they they presented horde mode, which I mean I, so I can good. I can still remember the first time I played horde mode. I actually played alone because I was in my house and I was like, oh, what's this horde mode here? Yeah, and and I played in a map called Avalanche, which was the first map that showed up. So it was I mean I was totally lost, and then wave one came and I survived, and wave two and three, and then I probably died at the third wave, and then I said wow, this must be really cool playing with friends. And I just call my cousin and I say, turn on your console. We're going to play right now. Yeah. But I said, I discovered something new in Gears of War because we were all about to campaign. We didn't play much the multiplayer. Mm -hmm. And we got hooked. And, I mean, it's my favorite gameplay so far. And it has a huge influence in the industry. We see a lot of games having horde modes, right? But none of them have really nailed it quite as well, too, which I think is also important. I yeah. love that it has made other games do that because you get so much more life out of a game mm -hmm. uh especially if you love the combat you can get that combat forever with horde mode but i i like also that still i don't think anyone has done it better than like gears 3 gear even gear exactly. even the new gears but yeah. gears 3 for me was like prime horde mode and i played it insane like oh man yeah. now i'm gonna go play gears of war thank you <laughs> hey no problem we can play together if you want so uh, we got to the part of the show where I have that 20-ish questions that I said I wanted to ask you. Uh, yes. Hopefully it's a fun part. It's going to be a lot of uh, quick questions. Uh, I have a few less because I had some Gears of War questions that we already got into. But still, uh, are you ready? Hit me. Okay. Uh, go. Favorite Star Wars movie? Oh, fuck. Empires. Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Classic, right? <laughs> Favorite movie that is not Star Wars? The Matrix. Favorite Star Wars character? Uh, Plo Koon. 
Yeah, I actually don't know much to know who That's he okay. Is. He's a, he's he's obscure. He's a member of the Jedi Council. Oh, it's... okay. But still, he's a Jedi. <laughs> yes. Jar Jar Binks. Sith Lord or just a pain in the ass? Just a pain in the ass. Okay. Uh, is Brendan Fraser really your favorite actor? He's up there. He's in my top three, at least. Are you sure about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, this is your last chance. We will really go on record on that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will go on record to say he is in my top three. Brendan Fraser is in my top three favorite actors. Okay, and, and I, that actually that actually counted as three questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> favorite actress. Oh. Rachel Wise. Nice pick. Uh, Favorite childhood or teen cartoon? Ooh, uh, Batman the Animated Series, definitely. Cool. Uh, favorite TV series, not a cartoon? Hmm, Seinfeld or Breaking Bad? Cool. I would go with Buffy, but still. Nice, my man, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, I rewatched all the 144 episodes of Buffy when it came out on Netflix. Oh, that's awesome. It's on Netflix? Yeah. At least in Brazil. Oh, man, I got to get on that. I had no idea. Okay. Uh, favorite sports that you watch? Boxing. Uh, favorite sports that you play on video games? In video games? Uh, basketball. Favorite sport to play in real life? If you hmm. actually do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, skateboarding. Does that count? Yeah, sure. It's a sport. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Favorite Assassin's Creed character? Ezio Auditore da Firenze. Yeah, that's Probably. everybody's favorite. Yeah, he's the best. Him or Haytham Kenway? I think Haytham is very interesting. He's a good villain. He's from Assassin's Creed... Three. Three he's, yeah. Connor, he's Connor's father, the main character. Okay. I like the one from Assassin's Creed Rogue, which is... Uh, forgot oh, Shay, Shay Cormac. Shay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's really good too. That's cool. The pirate uh, ones. Are your favorite console, either this generation or any time. Favorite console, probably the PlayStation 2. Very good memories of that, right? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. lots of games for that. Lots of good games. Cool. Uh, when will you come to Brazil? That's a good question. When can I come to Brazil? Uh, as soon as I get a passport. I don't even have a passport. I'm, have you ever I'm left the U.S.? I have not. No, I've been to. Well, I've been to Mexico. Okay. And that's it. Yeah. Not even Canada. Nope, not Canada. I'm going to Canada in the fall. But cool. yeah, I'm a pretty sheltered boy. I have a lot of places to uh, see in America first. I'm, but I'm finished. I've seen them all. <laughs> cool. Uh, cats or dogs? Dogs. Dr. Pepper or Cherry Coke? Dr. Pepper. Uh, will you name your children after video game characters? No, but I will name them after Star Wars characters. <laughs> cool. Possibly, if I can get away with it. Cool. Uh, how many plaid shirts do you own? Two. I wear them a lot. Yeah, I didn't expect the number to be so low because you're always having plaid shirts in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> I wash them a lot. Don't worry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Do you wear makeup on screen? No. 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 Is is this your real hair? Yes. Yeah, actually. <laughs> no. Imagine. No, it's real. Hundred percent real. Yeah, that was just to to shank your chains. Uh, did you get your pizza tattoo yet? No. Uh, mm. it's still on the top of my list. I am a blank slate, no tattoos. But if I got one, it would be pizza. Jeez. It would absolutely be pizza. What's your favorite pizza flavor? Regular. Regular old straight up cheese pizza. And what's your favorite pizza place in New York? Primo Pizza on 38th. Cool. I'll be sure to check it out if I Yeah, do it. You can, if, if you when you come to New York, York, just hit me up. I'll give you a list. Cool. Well, uh, that was all of the questions I had. Uh, I did it. Thank you very much for, for, for having this interview. It was amazing for you. I mean, I, I'm so used to watching you on screen, but now you're actually talking back to me. This is Dude, so cool. Thank you for having me. I never get enough opportunities to just talk. So 
Thank you. Seriously. And thanks for shouting me out, too. That's huge. And thanks yes. for watching. First of all, that's thank you. I'm, I'm still not good at saying thank you, but no, thank you. It was very good. And it, it made my birthday very special. When you said I could choose any day from this week, I said I'm going to make it on Wednesday because it's my birthday. And it's Well, happy go. birthday. Of course. So happy well. birthday. <laughs> I, I hope you what, you got anything planned. Anything good? Uh, no, just going to have some cake with family, friends and, and my son. That's perfect. Yeah, he, that sounds he'll pretty perfect. One, he'll be one year old on Saturday, and then we're going to make a big party for both of us. Oh, that's perfect. That works out so great. You planned yeah. that, didn't you? No, it actually <laughs> happened by accident, but I was pretty happy when it happened. That's excellent, man. Yeah, and he chose Star Wars team. He can't talk right yet, but he definitely, with his eyes, he said, I want a Star Wars birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's so great. It's He's going to do just fine. Cool. Well, to wrap things up, I have one last thing to say, which hopefully I won't get in trouble with you. But uh, I have in my hand a gift card from Papa John's Pizza that I'll be mailing to you guys. <laughs> Hell just, yeah! Just so I can say, I'm Chris, I'm here with Jake Baldino, and pizza's on me today. Holy crap, dude, thank you. That's amazing. <laughs> we have one right down the block. So it's perfect. Cool. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you, dude. And, and this is serious. I'm actually mailing you. If, if you don't get it, just, just let me know. And oh, I just wanted to make this, this fun joke at the end of the video. You are the best. Seriously. <laughs> That's awesome. You're a rock star, man. Thanks a lot. Hope you guys enjoy the pizza. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you. Bye-bye, Jay.